Right on 76 on IRC, uh, and this is our presentation for building asterisk applications. Uh, just want to let you know, as it says on the website, uh, if you're not familiar with asterisk, you'll be bored to tears. If you already know how to write asterisk applications, you'll be bored to tears. So, I'm talking about dial plan applications themselves. So this is all in C. So if you don't know C, you'll be bored to tears. Uh, so I'm sort of expecting, like most of you, to get up and leave, and there'd be like five people left, and we'll have an intelligent conversation. But uh, oh well. Uh, so just uh, to go over a little bit for the asterisk style plan, uh, we have a context. Uh, this actually is a real context. Uh, our incoming context, we include two contexts, other contexts. Then we have the extension de definitions, uh, the extension, the priority, and this right here is the, ap the application itself. This is what I'm talking about developing. Uh, these are all standard applications, wait, set music on hold, answer, set bar, uh, db get and go to if. Uh, we're talking about some of those things uh, a little later. Uh, and these are just uh, some of the applications uh, in here. Um, some things I've actually worked on, absolute timeout. I haven't worked on that actually, but uh, add queue member, the AGI stuff, the cut, which is mine, uh, random conditionally branches, uh, say Unix time, which I developed completely, and we'll discuss this one. These three, which you've never seen before because I haven't released them yet. Uh, these are what I'll be talking about m a lot later because they're brand new applications that will get released uh, to uh, the community on Monday. Uh, and then, of course, there's voicemail. So I'll just go through the application skeleton. Every application is basically going to look like this. You'll have a whole bunch of includes uh, for the various things. Uh, accessing files, logging, uh, channel manipulation and channel structures, uh, actual PBX routines uh, like the variable setting, uh, modules which all your applications, unless you build them internally to uh, Asterix itself, everybody's going to use modules. Blocking, uh, which is really important because Asterix is a multi-threaded application. And so there's a lot of opportunities for race conditions. And then we just have a few uh, standards. Uh, we have a description for the entire, uh, not necessarily the application, but the module itself. Um, the name of the app, a synopsis, uh, which you can view uh, in line when running asterisk, show application. Uh, few de declarations. Here's the meat of the uh, application skeleton. This is what actually gets executed uh, when you call it in the dial plan back here. Uh, again, this is just an overview. Uh, unload module, what happens when you unload it. Basically, it's all it is is unregistering your application. Since these are modules, uh, the nice thing about in Asterix about these modules is that not only they can they be loaded at boot, but they can also be loaded, loaded later, and they can be unloaded uh, after boot. So you have unload, load. Uh, this actually is going to have a reload in it, but reload module is a standard description uh, and use count. And use count is uh, what determines whether or not you can unload this module. If it's in use, you can't unload it. Uh, going into some of the configuration methods, some of the configuration APIs. Uh, this is config.h. Uh, two main ones, load a config file, destroy a config file, uh, category browse, variable browse, and variable retrieve, and uh, a little caveat on the category pointers. They are special. 
because in several of the config files you can have, for example, in uh, sip.com or eeks.com, You can have a type user and the same context name that is, for example, a type equals peer. I won't go into type and peers right now because they're irrelevant to my talk. But basically what would happen is uh, the thing about the category pointers, uh, when you do a category browse, uh, the previous right here needs to be the actual pointer of the last time that you called at ASD category browse. If you didn't do that, you would go through here, you get VCCH, this one, and if you just passed back a character string, and if that worked, you would go down here, and this would be your next one that you'd parse. Now if there's anything down here, you'd, there'd be a problem, because you'd pass back VCCH again, and it would find this one as the first one and give you this one again. So you'd have a nice little uh, infinite loop there. That's why uh, we have the category pointer is uh, special in the category browse right here. Uh, and also the same thing when you do an AST variable browse. Again, that has to be the same uh, physical, the, the actual pointer, not a copy of the string. Uh, ditto for AST variable retrieve. Otherwise, you'd only ever encounter this one. Um, and then we also have ASD true and ASD false. Uh, the reason for these is that you will typically recognize when you're doing true false, there are diff different ways of expressing true false. Uh, there is, of course, one and zero. There's T and F. There's tr the word true and the word false. Uh, there's also yes, no. And when you're dealing with the conf asterisk config files, uh, you're going to deal with all of these possible, all of these possibilities in the config. Uh, so the nice thing we have nice little functions for you uh, to know uh, which is. Uh, what is actually true. I actually have never seen AST false used in code. Everybody either uses true, and then if not true, something else. And then the only two, uh, this AST variable, when you get back for variable browse, or uh, yeah, for ar variable browse, you'll get a structure, and the only two that really matter to you are the name and the value. Sorry. The question is, what do, do you get to deallocate those when you're done with them? And the answer is no. Uh, Asterisk takes care of that for you. When the channel is destroyed, uh, it goes through and deallocates all of them for you. And here's a few f special functions that you. Uh, these are not all of them, but a few special functions which you will need to use, uh, mostly for portability sake. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Linux programming uh, will recognize AST, or sorry, STR dupe A, which is uh, very similar to an STR dupe, except that it uses alloc A uh, for its memory allocation. And the difference being uh, malloc, uh, which is STR dupe, uh, uses memory off the heap. Uh, STR dupe A uses memory off the stack. And so it's automatically deallocated when you return from your function. Uh, the problem is, is that str dupe A is Linux specific. Uh, it is, does not exist on BSD. So we have this handy dandy function here to uh, do an str dupe A if you're on Linux and do something uh, different if you're on BSD. So it works the same. Uh, ASD str lin zero uh, is something that we added. Uh, for a very simple reason. 
a lot of people, myself included, would do in their code, they would do if strlin some pointer. And this is incredibly inefficient because what strlin does is it counts the number of characters in the string. Well, if you're using this as a Boolean, the only thing you really care about is whether the first one is a null or not. So that's why we have, we would modify this in asterisk to if AST, I'm sorry, if not AST strlin zero at the pointer. Uh, just a time saving uh, function that's in there. And we like putting it everywhere because people forget. Um, again, mo mostly, again, all these are for portability. AST mutex defines static for a mutex name. Uh, this is because mutexes are defined differently on different implementations of Linux and BSD. Uh, some of them you can use a static initializer like in Linux. Others you have to call a function to allocate uh, a number of different uh, structures for initializing the mutex. Uh, get host by name. Uh, the usual one is not, the usual get host by name is not thread safe. So that's a nice thread safe implementation. Again, with inet n2a, it's not thread safe. So we have our own. And uh, this one, AS, uh, str case string, is another one like str dupe, in which case it, uh, str case string exists in Linux even though there is no man page for it, uh, but does not exist anywhere else. And the reason I found this out is I actually wrote this function because I went, hey, this would be a neat function to have. And then Mark said, hey, it's in the include file. Uh, so I guess it does exist in, in the in uh, GNU libc, but uh, it's not documented anywhere. And we found a nice little bug in it too. So that's why it's not documented. All right. So here at this point, we will have a I will have a bit of a discussion about some applications which I have written. Uh, we'll start with say Unix time cut and eval, and then go into app stack. All right, so this is actually is a copy off of our uh, production machine, well, on which I do most of my development. Yes, I know I do. I do development on production. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> so we'll look at.
let's have a look at, say, Unix time, for example. Uh, this is something I wrote from the ground up. Uh, that reminds me, that's another function I have that, uh, oh well. It's another function that uh, doesn't exist anywhere else. Uh, it's, uh, let's find it. Uh, let's see, where did I put that? That's right, and this is in sub function. Never mind. Alright, so this is something that, uh, originally there was something in, in Asterisk called date time that didn't quite work, uh, or it worked, but it didn't say uh, time in the regular format. I think it said the year before it said the time. Uh, or something, or no, it said the time, it had said the year after the time. So it was really weird. Um, so what I did is I developed a, something in here that allowed us to uh, save the time in whatever format. And the really nice thing about this is two things. Um, you'll note that in here, not only do you have the choice of, say, Unix, the current Unix time, which if, if you specify this with the, fir the first argument missing, it will say the current time, but also the time zone, which allows you to say it not just in the time zone in the current machine, but uh, any time zone. Uh, and the reason why this was problematic was that the functions that we use to parse out uh, the Unix time into uh, its component pieces, the uh, month, day, year, uh, hour, minute, and second uh, is kind of thread safe. It's you may notice local time underscore r is uh, what you usually use for that. Uh, it's kind of thread safe because you're passing all parameters. Unfortunately, it isn't really thread safe, and the reason is is that it uses an environmental variable. In a threaded application you've got one environmental, environmental variable for all of your threads. So if you try to change that environmental variable uh, sometime in the middle of uh, uh, doing your local time, something could possibly change. Bad things can happen. Uh, so we wrote, uh, what is it, AST local time. That's very similar to uh, local time R, but takes an additional parameter, which is the time zone itself. The same thing that you'd have in your uh, TZ environmental variable. And you may note in here, this is actually two applications. It's both say Unix time and date time. The reason being is that uh, since say Unix time did everything date time did, we just said, the heck with it. We'll just uh, scrap date time. Um, so takes exactly the same parameters, does exactly the same thing. And here's the exec of it. Uh, won't go too much into this other than get time of day, obviously a kernel call. Uh, grab the seconds out of it. Again, we're using AST STR dupe to duplicate our input, which is a void pointer, and we want to make it into a string um, so that this doesn't uh, give us an error. Not an error warning. Uh, parsing of our arguments. Generally, we use strsep, and you'll notice we're using s here, which in this case is an alloc aid pointer. So it doesn't matter that we're being destructive on this because it's on the stack, and it goes away when we return from our function. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, Unix time. Uh, format in here, uh, I'll discuss this a little bit when I go over to say.c, uh, but this is a specific format which is uh, the day of the week, uh, the month of the year, the day of the year, the year, uh, this actual sound which is in the subdirectory digits, 
the word at, and then IMP, which of course is the hour and 12 hour format, M, the minutes, and AM or PM. Uh, you may recognize these digits from STRF time. That's because we modeled it off of STRF time so that it wouldn't be too weird. Uh, Oh, and this is something that uh, I haven't completed yet. Uh, at the sound of the tone, the time will be exactly, uh, that's what this is for here. And we have our handy dandy function, AST say date with format, which is the meat of what it actually does, which I also wrote. Uh, uh, if you're familiar with asterisks though, uh, you'll know that uh, AST say time with say date with format has actually been far expanded from when I wrote it, uh, and now does almost any language, or any language that Asterisk supports. Uh, again, this is more stuff that I've uh, hacked in here that is not yet ready. Uh, again, our standard unload module, load module, description, and use count. Oh, and we also have key in here. And this is the asterisk GPL key. You're familiar with this if you're a developer already. Uh, but if not, all this is is a string which says that uh, if you decide to distribute this module, Digim gets to use it for free with no, li with no license restrictions. Uh, let's see. Oh, and the other one, let's see. Yeah, as you can see, these are all the uh, things that were expanded out. I guess I wrote the underscore en uh, before it was renamed. Lots of different languages. Here we go. So we just run through the format saying times, and like I said, AST local time takes three the, the three parameters, the actual time, the uh, TM uh, structure, and a time zone uh, so that we can do it in multiple time zones without creating race conditions. Uh, oh, by the way, the reason why we went with a different thing instead of trying to add a lock is that because this is saying words, uh, if you've got a longer format, you could quite possibly lock uh, your lock for, you know, 20 seconds. And if you've got multiple people using the system, and they all want to use, say, Unix time, uh, you're going to lock people out for a long time. That's why we didn't use a lock here uh, with uh, local time R uh, for the environmental variable, and instead went with our own routi routine there. So other than that, this is actually a pretty simple, routi simple routine. We run through all the characters in here based upon the uh, formula of the character. And again, we're, if you add more options here, please try to be consistent with strf time 3. We got literal sound files. That's not consistent with strf time. And the various day of the week, month, um, these are cardinal numbers, which are different from jump just numbers. Um, this is as in first, second, third, not one, two, three. Year, um, dealing with, uh, since I wrote this in, uh, 2003, uh, it should always be greater than 99, but just in case, uh, we've got, we handle it all the way back to 1900.
hours. Uh, we did uh, we both do uh, army time so we can do 0800 hours as well as doing 8 for those who want army time for those who don't want army time We have also two thing, two extensions that are not in uh, STRF time three here. Uh, these are just standard. Uh, really, the reason that we did this was so that if you received something an hour ago, it's not going to go ahead and give you the month, the day, uh, the the, uh, the day of the week, the month, the day of the uh, month, and the year. It could say today or yesterday. Pretty simple. And then uh, Mark asked for lowercase q, which is, it excludes the today if it was today. And more good stuff. Anyway. Uh, since it's getting on, hey, wow, I wasted half an hour already. Uh, We'll go ahead and look at AppStack. All right. And the basic thing of, of AppStack is, I'm going to actually get my presentation back because I actually have these points. Uh, the w reason why I've created these app stack stuff is so we have some common routines. Uh, now you may know that a lot of people ha do subroutines already with macro. Uh, I like doing this for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's I mean I think it's altogether back better than macro. Uh, there is a case of an exception. Uh, if you have an absolute timeout, which is the maximum amount of time that a call can uh, possibly take up, uh, there is a way to catch that exception. Um, but macro does not handle it. Mark said, hey, why don't you handle it? Well, it does its own event loop, and I wanted to use the regular event loop, not, uh, not have to deal with this in the future. Um, the other nice thing here is that in stack, we get recursion um, without having to hack do the hacks the way that uh, macro does hacks. It Macro actually has to store several variables in a private location uh, so it can uh, do proper recursive macros. And the other thing I added as an afterthought was local variables. Uh, and the nice thing about local variables is you can set a bunch of local variables in a subroutine. When you return from the subroutine, they disappear. So just like uh, Perl and C, in fact, uh, the variables are mod uh, modeled after uh, Perl in that uh, if it can't find the, your variable on the current level, it looks to the next higher level, all the way up to uh, channel variables and global variables. Let's go back here to the code. So we've created a whole bunch of different applications here. Again, this is a single module, but to a number of different applications. Uh, go sub and go sub if you may recognize these from basic. Uh, that's because they're modeled on basic. Uh, return, same thing. Stack pop. Uh, pop the last return address off the stack and make it go away without returning. Uh, very useful if you're dealing with exceptions and you don't want to return to where you came from. And so it's set local var. Uh, so again, we have synopses, the same thing, and descriptions. 
missed what I just said. Um, go sub if, which is based upon go to if, um, and we're actually using this currently in our current dial plan uh, to set the caller ID based upon which uh, phone is actually u calling it. I know we can set caller ID in Zapata.conf, uh, but I liked because Zapata.conf is not reloadable currently. Uh, I like to have something where I can do these lookups on the fly, and also allows my sys my ad the admins on for our customers to redefine caller ID on the fly. Yeah, I use everything in a database, by the way. And basically what I had to do for doing these stacks is I had to modify the channel definition. was, oh, let's see, uh, first we have our AST ghost up stack here, which is how I implement my stack. Um, the context, the extension, and the priority, this is where you return to uh, a bunch of variables uh, and the next in the stack, uh, so we can, obviously this is recursive up to uh, the limits of memory. This down here, AST channel expansion, you can ignore right now because it's not done yet. But basically, we just uh, add that in to the channel structure somewhere in here. This is a big channel structure. There we go. There it is. Right there. Just a pointer, null initialized as usual, and. Uh, And then we had to do a, a couple extra things in the channel itself. I know this is not very modular, but the thing you saw before, AST expansions, um, we will uh, soon make this all mod very modular so that uh, we don't actually have to modify the channel definition when we add new features like this. So in the destructor, we have something to destroy the channel, to, sorry, to destroy all possible stacks that we have in the system uh, in case you exit without returning. Someone hangs up, for example. And that's it. So the stack stuff will all be released on Monday uh, to the asterisk community. Uh, do I have any questions? I get this really, really bored look on everybody's face. You know, you did not have to stay here for the entire talk. Questions? The uh, question is whether I program everything in C. When I do everything, I know there's something called AGI, which in which allows you to execute a separate application Basically, it forks uh, and allows you to run uh, your applications basically any language. Uh, I have, by and large, tried to avoid that because it is forking, and forking is not as efficient as threading. Uh, in the case of an application, you're already threaded for every channel, so you're not actually creating anything additionally. You're just executing a function, so it's even more efficient uh, than just adding new thread. Uh, a lot of the applications that I've written uh, over time, over the past two years, of, uh, I've been an Asterix developer, are applications so that I could avoid writing stuff in AGI. Uh, the cut application is a great example of that. So is the random application. Uh, say Unix time to a certain extent was so I didn't have to, uh, to uh, do my own custom uh, Perl app to uh, 
to say the current time in whatever time zone I wanted. More questions? Cool. I'm done early. Yes. Uh, the question is whether we we're uh, going to port to uh, APXS, APR. Um, I actually have not considered that. The module design in Asterix right now uh, is very stable already and works very well. Um, no, I actually had not considered that, but um, yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty modular already. You don't need to go that route. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How well does Asterix deal with modules that go off the deep end? You mean in terms of if it uh, allocates too much memory? Uh, if a module decides to mis misbehave, well, it's it is in fact the in it's it's located inside Asterix itself, so Asterix itself misbehaves. Uh, the not, the neat thing here is most people run it inside of safe Asterisk. Uh, which is a routine that, in case Asterix were to crash, which it doesn't very, do very often unless someone wrote something stupid, uh, and I've done something stupid before, so uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, excluding myself from that in that category. Uh, in case Asterix does something stupid, it will restart on the fly. Of course, you lose all the calls that are currently going on, but hey, wh how else are you going to deal with a crash? Any other questions? I'm sorry? Squealing feedback? All right. That's it, guys.